things that I used to like as I'm walking in the sanctification process, it's like I'm turning back and I'm looking at them things and I'm like, I don't value it. I got used to because I'm getting closer to my Lord. Lord help us. So every last one of us, including me, the man you see today was not the man I was when I first got saved 30 years ago. Totally different. <laughs> if you would have saw me on day one, you would Each and every one of you here to Fuel Station Church, we are so blessed and honored to be here. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. If you have not had a chance to like and subscribe to our channel, we do ask you to do so at this time. I am in the room with some of the most amazing Jesus disciples, and I'm so blessed and honored to be here with them. And I know that they are happy to be here as well, too. So we've been in a series entitled Sanctified in the Kingdom, and today we're going to be going to episode 17, and we have been talking about this new series on value system. And today we're going to be doing part two on that. So Jesus disciples, let's get our Bibles. Let's get ready. And real quick, Jesus disciples, let's let's applause for the wonderful people that that's viewing. Let's let them know how much we love them. Let's... So we're going to ask everybody to go to um, Matthew chapter six. We're going to go to the scripture that we went to last week. Um, we're talking about value systems. Um, God is trying to sanctify our value systems. Who in here, since the teaching from last week, you have been reassessing the things you value? Who in here would say that you've discovered that there are some things that you've been valuing that is at the top of the list that should be at item nine? <laughs> OK, because it's it's not saying that it shouldn't be on the list. It's just where it was prioritized. And that is what we got to work on. So um, remember, Jesus, Jesus is um, what he's done for us is so amazing. I don't believe if you ever feel like uh, that you don't have value. Do you think somebody would give their life on the cross if you didn't have value? You're so valuable that he literally hung on that cross for all of us. And if you were the only person, he would have did it just for you. That's how valuable you are. And we will walk around here like, yeah, I don't love myself. And Jesus like, I wouldn't have did all that dying if you wasn't just nobody. I did this because of the value you bring. Now, this is going to be interesting what I'm going to share tonight because um, last week I told you that if you want to know the things you value, look at where you spend your money. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Because where your treasure is, your heart will be there. Now, there's two areas. There's two things that if you if, if, and this is something you can write down, you can watch it um, uh, later. But I'm, I'm telling you, it is the truth. And I want you to think about what I'm about to say. There's two areas that will immediately show you. There's two things that you can spend that will immediately show you the things that's important in your heart. That's your time and money time and money spent is you only spend time and money on things you value you can't pay me to spend none of my time on stuff that i don't care about i can't i would not get up and take a shower and and go somewhere that i don't even have a that it doesn't seem it's not important to me so your time and money is telling you, is telling you what is important in your heart. That is what we got to look at and say, well, what is this? Why, why is all my money going here? It's because your heart is there. Why is all my time going here? It's because your heart is there. So this is how Jesus, a lot of times he, when he says, so where your treasure is there, your heart be also. He says that because he already understand that the outward manifestation, if you want to see an outside compass of what's going on in your heart, look at where your time and money going. Because most people would say, oh, my heart is with the Lord. 
but your time and money is here. So here is where your heart is. So it shows up in currency through time and money. Everybody understand that? So this is how you're going to really tell it. It's the number one test. You know, I, when I've worked with some clients and stuff, I always tell them, I said, well, what's in your heart? And they'll tell me all this stuff that's in their heart. And then I will say, well, where, do, you, do you invest money and time into that? Well, I don't have time to. Then that ain't the thing. You can't say, I, this is what I care about, and there is no investment into that. So that's why Christ is, was saying in Matthew chapter 6, which we're going to go back. Let's read that again. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and, moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 20, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says, there will be. There will, your heart will be there. It's, it's going to be there 100%. So that's why I was using the, the Buffalo Bills game. Those people are investing time and money for that team. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an outward manifestation of we're, the people who got that team's back. So the, the, some people at the stadium, they don't have to tell Josh Allen and all of them, hey, I got your back. Them being there is showing it. <laughs> them spending that $300 ticket showed I got your back. So in relationships, if you tell a person I got your back and you don't see no time spent towards it and no money invested towards it, the person is lying. Everybody <laughs> understand that? <laughs> Oh, I love you. And I don't see no time in love. I don't see no money invested in me. You don't love me. Your words tell me, but your time and money is telling me everything. You don't spend no time with me, but you love me. Never. Soon as soon as you got to spend a little money on me, you complain it. That ain't no. You don't value me. And then you would take the same money you complain about and invest it in something temporal. We're rusting. Thieves can break in. That, and, and so it's a law. Time and money spent is going to tell you where your heart is. So again, that's your number one test. All week long, just look where you're, just look where you're going. Sweep. Sweep. And then start, start timing yourself. Start looking at how many minutes am I giving to this? So if you're giving a lot of minutes to garbage and junk, that is what you value. You value garbage. <laughs> So I used to, back in the day, I was a movie fanatic. I watched, I had to see every new movie that came out. I had to see, I used to love horror movies back in the day when I was a little boy. Man, I, cause that was, I, I, I guess I liked horror. I was, I don't know what was wrong with me, <laughs> but everything, I just needed all the, but watch this, all the good stuff that was good for me. I never invested no time and money in watching that. Isn't that, isn't that something? All the stuff that could have edu educated me and helped me to be better. I ain't, Jerome, I put no time and money into that. All my time and money was into stuff <laughs> that was, that scared you, spooked you out, because that's where my heart was. That's where my level was. So I attracted, I spent, and I would spend eight hours a day. Oh, don't have a, don't, don't have a Halloween, uh, what, the Halloween series where they go Halloween one, Halloween two, Halloween, oh my God. I, and then, Kita, I will get so prepared for the series that I will go spend money and buy popcorn. You up now? Go money, and then I will spend eight hours watching back-to-back -back Halloween, and none of that is doing me no good today. My heart was there; it ain't there no more because my heart has been sanctified. Is this making sense? I have new things that I can do with that eight hours for the kingdom. So the, na the same currency that I was given to horror movies, I'm giving now to building up my spiritual man because that's what I value. All right. So now let me take you to Matthew chapter 13. Go to Matthew 13, verse 44. I just want to show you this real quick of what it looks like to, uh, to see value. So you have to understand what Jesus was telling his disciples in Matthew 6. He says, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Or drink. He, what he was trying to do was tell them, he says, the pagans, they worry about this stuff. They care about this. He says, but for you, in Matthew 6, 30, he says, you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this other stuff that you value is going to be added. So he says, the stuff that you're valuing, he said, I'm not telling you, you're not going to get it. 
He just said, you're the one trying to get it, but you're putting it before the kingdom and my righteousness. So he says, let me just put me first. Everybody say, put me first. Put Christ first. And God says, all this other stuff that you value, I will add them. So he's saying he's going to give it to you, but he can't give it to you if you put them before him. So now in Matthew 13, look at verse 44. He's talking to a multitude and he starts talking. He starts sharing this parable about the kingdom. And look at what he says in this one. And he says in verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy Therefore, go and go with and sell it all that he have and buyeth that field. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a he said it's like treasure hid. He says, but the man who see the treasure, who see the value will go sell everything he got for this thing. So he's pretty much saying when you see the kingdom in its true estate. And that can only be done if your eyesight is sanctified. Y'all remember eyesight from last year? So when your eyesight is sanctified, you can truly see what comes with the kingdom package. So when you get Christ, you get a lot. We're not serving Christ just to get stuff. We're, but there's, a, there's things that come because you got him. You, so he says, listen, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What what is he talking about more abundantly? Look at you got your t you get a ticket to eternity paid for. It's paid for. You ain't going to hell. Who happy about that? <laughs> so that alone, if that was the only thing that we got out the deal, we good. Right. But guess what he says? He, there's a scripture in here just for you. Don't know. He says those of you who give up houses, brothers, cars and all this for my name's sake he says guess what in this life the one y'all i will give that back you're gonna get that back but you're gonna get persecution with it <laughs> so guess what he says he says whoever give up things for me i'm gonna give it back to you but when i give it back to you guess what it will be second third and fourth and fifth because i'm number one that's all he's doing with us, guys. He's just going like this. Okay, I know you're putting too much on your house. I know you value it. You're giving your house 10 hours a day. You're giving me one minute. Let's just try to alter some of that time allotment to just spend a little bit more time with me so I can show you your purpose, your destiny, and then spend the rest of your hours on the house. He ain't saying don't work on the house at all. He just like, just, just. Put the value, just shift that. And that's all he's working on. So you have people that has struggled with this because a lot of people don't see the value in the kingdom. That's why they, this guy who saw this treasure, this field, he's, he, the scripture said he went and go get witness, sold everything he had to get this. That's value. When you, listen, if there was a piece of gold laying on the floor right now, who in here would, uh, if, Actually, let, let me let me just get a get, give a, a, a good um, if you knew that there was a million dollars worth of gold, a million dollars worth of gold laying on the floor, just just laying under your beautiful garden. You've invested time and money to make this beautiful garden. You've been spending 15 years making this garden look the way it is. Sue. this garden is gorgeous. And then you discover there there is a million dollars of gold under that garden. Would you destroy the, the beautiful garden to get the gold or would you? I don't want to mess my flowers up. What, which one would you do? <laughs> Why would you destroy all those beautiful flowers? Why would she do that? Because the thing inside the, the, the flowers is more valuable than the flowers. The things in the kingdom is more valuable than the thing you're seeking. God is like, why don't you destroy the things you're seeking and get the value first? Because if you get me, you can easily, if you get the million dollar gold, you can go buy somebody to go plant some new flowers. You see, you see the, the logic of that? So why would she sit there and sacrifice the value 
for some beautiful temporal flowers. Would that, do that make sense, Keenan? We do it all the time. God, this, by, this book got so much value in it. And we will read every book but this. We know more about Martin Luther King than we do about Jesus. <laughs> the man is gone and we know more about him than we do Jesus. We know more about President Kennedy than we do about Jesus. Isn't that something, Martha? You see how we value because and, and we went to years of school and none of them in the school. Brother Lawrence said, study Jesus. They told us to study Christopher Columbus. We study all these people who cannot give us eternal life. Isn't that something? We know about when they were born. We know what country they came from. When we come to Jesus, I think he we got people say uh, he black. He, he He's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, what's going on here? Oh, we don't value this. That's why we don't read. So he's working on this. Now, now let me show you what real value look like. Go to Philippians chapter three. Now we go. This is if you want to see what it looked like through a, do, as a what it physically looked like. Let me show you. Go to Philippians chapter three, because Philippians chapter three is about this, about to challenge all of us, including myself. Every time I read it, I'm like, Lord God, I got a long way to go. But guess what? I love being challenged because when you when you really understand what you got, you start to say things like this. Philippians chapter three. And I want to say thank you to all y'all because I, I'm looking at y'all. Y'all got your Bibles. Y'all taking up. Thank you. Thank you. Don't matter. You guys are some disciples. And the reason why I say that, because a lot of people don't value. What they're getting so they don't, you know, so I want to thank all of you for for doing that. Philippians chapter three, let's read verse three, the verse 10. This is the apostle Paul who, who life was transformed <laughs> by Christ. All right. Now look at, look at Paul and look at the value system shift here. He says here, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the, in the flesh. Verse four, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in his flesh, I the more. What he is saying there in verse four is, if there's anybody who can be confident in their abilities and what they've accomplished, he says, I'm the guy. This is what he's saying. Now look at what he says in verse five. He's about to tell you why he so he could be confident. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Verse six, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Pretty much what he said there. Pretty much what he said there, he says, when it comes to righteousness of the law, touching the law, I'm blameless. You can't find no dirt on me because I was that awesome, Dora. But what things were gained to me, those I count them loss for who? Right. The man got all kind of degrees. The man arrived, Lawrence, to the place of, oh, I'm, I'm sanctified, sure, I'm good, I'm living holy. And all of those accomplishments, he says, I, I'm, I'll give rid of all that for Christ. Because Christ is the value, not my degree. <laughs> I hope you guys see this. So look at what he says there. He says, verse eight, yea, doubtless, I count all things. He ain't say some things. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He suffered the loss of everything and he's still talking about I got the best. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see a person who found value in Christ? You're looking at it. If we lost a couple of things, oh, Jesus, I'm leaving the church because we don't value Christ. We went to serve Jesus to get stuff. And then when he took the stuff, we left Jesus because we never came here for him. <laughs> Paul's like, take the stuff. I got the I got the I got the jewel. It's Christ. If I get more stuff, hey, that's a bonus. But I still got the jewel. So take whatever. He said, I've been beaten. I've been suffered. The man was thrown in prison. Y'all know the story about Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. The man is in prison with his partner. 
getting beaten for this value. They were so happy to get beaten. They're in there singing praises, Martha. How many of y'all that see that much value in Christ that you just suffer for him and now you're in prison for him and you now start to praise him? That's only a value thing. You can't do that if you don't. If you ain't value Jesus, you'll be like, I'm, I ain't serving you no more. I don't like this stuff. You, I don't value this kingdom stuff. This is a bit too much. I'm going back to the club. I'm going back to the club and I'm shaking it. <laughs> this this kingdom stuff is a little too too restrictive. <laughs> I'm going back to shake it. Play play my song, DJ. I'm going back because at least I don't got to go to prison. Because I value comfort more than I do Christ. The Lord have mercy. Jesus have mercy. Paul said, now look at verse eight again. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. That means master and owner for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Now watch this and do count them. What's the them? The things he lost. And do count the new house and do count the promotion and do count the, the, the relationships lost that I may win the treasure. And look at what he says in verse nine and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that is which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made complete formable unto his death. Paul said, I'm at the place with all my degrees. I was a Pharisee. I was a Hebrews of the Hebrews. I got all the knowledge. Paul was not a dumb man. He was probably one of the most educated people, one of the most educated scholars back in the day. He sat under Gamil, one of the, the top teachers back then. The man was brilliant when it came down to the law. So he was, Paul was pretty much like, listen, I have all this knowledge and still that don't make sense because Jesus Christ is the value. And I need him. I don't need more education. I need him. This education I'm pursuing, if it don't got the value in it, why am I still pursuing it? So Paul was like, listen, OK, I got all this education, but what is it going to do me? Oh, oh, it sounds like this in another scripture. What profit a man that you gain the whole world and lose your soul? So you can gain a lot of stuff here. And still end up without the value value systems all so now let's let's bring this all down to and we'll start winding it down so what what why is this in the sanctification in the sanctified in the kingdom series because i've been sharing through the holy spirit's been sharing to us that i think everybody here know what sanctification means to be sanctified means god sets you apart for his use OK, that's where he calls you. He says, I am going to sanctify you, Sharice, for my use. So he's he's chosen you to do something specific. He is he's called you out amongst others for a specific work. You are sanctified. Now he takes that sanctified person through sanctification. And sanctification is what we call process. I hope you guys are getting that. Because many of us is in the process. That's why we're feeling the, the pull to go back to Egypt. Do I want to go to the promised land? Do I want to be what God called me to be? Or do I want to go back to be Rufus? <laughs> that's why we're feeling this, because that's called <laughs> sanctification. Things that I used to like as I'm walking in the sanctification process, it's like I'm turning back and I'm looking at them things and I'm like, I don't value it. Like I used to. Because I'm getting closer to my Lord. Lord, help us. So every last one of us, including me, the man you see today was not the man I was when I first got saved 30 years ago. Totally different. <laughs> if you would have saw me on day one, you would be like, I would never listen to this dude. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have a problem telling you all that. I was not the man you see today. 
but through what we call sanctification. You see in a man now that's saying, listen, kill me for Jesus. Back then, I would be like, listen, I'm going to serve you, Jesus, but no suffering. If somebody talking about me, I'm leaving the church. I'm going to serve you, Jesus, only if you can give me money. I'm going to serve you, Jesus, if you can only give me everything I pray for. That was that guy. Do the sanctification process. I only want what you want. Your way and not mine. So something changed in the heart during this process called sanctification. Everybody understand? And some of those things were value systems. Because <laughs> I don't value some stuff that I used to value back then. It was stuff I value. I need. I remember. Did I tell y'all remember some weeks ago I told y'all about my that the gold chain? Y'all remember that? See, y'all ain't right. I, I was hoping y'all was good. <laughs> Lord help us. I, I knew y'all was going to remember that story. So for those of you, listen, back in the day, I used to value gold necklaces. Yeah, you remember back in the day, you know, y'all probably remember back in the day, when, you know, the back, I used to be in a big rap, man. And, you know, those rap stars just have those big ropes, those gold ropes, you know. And I, that was like, you know, you remember too, Maria? You remember that? Maria, like, oh, yeah, I remember. I had a couple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I used to value it, and I finally got one, Maria. And, and somebody stole it. And, and I value that thing so much, man. That I, I, it was like, if I can get me one of them, man, I just feel like somebody, you know? Because my value system says gold necklace means status or means I'm somebody. Man, through my sanctification process, got, something happened in the process. I can't even tell you the day, but in the process of sanctification, somewhere along the way, my heart, change and I wanted Christ more than a necklace. And when that happened, Brother Lawrence, somebody blessed me with a bunch of gold chains in the sanctification. Now watch this. And the reason why I know I was changed, I gave them away. I, <laughs> I, called, I counted them but loss. I hope y'all get this. So the thing that I value, Dora, I counted that thing dung to get this. That's what sanctification looks like. So everybody in here, when you get saved, I promise you, you ain't going to be that same person. But when by the time you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, God, listen, God is he is working on all of our hearts. He's, he is getting our hearts ready. That's why he is just constantly everything he's doing in your life right now is working on this thing called the heart. He's getting the heart ready. So this is why the scripture says he is coming back for a church without spot wrinkle or blemish. He's talking about the heart. Because if the heart don't got spot, wrinkle, or blemish, then it's going to permeate through your flesh. <laughs> Lord, no. The flesh ain't going to have the blemishes because the heart is right. But if you're trying to get the flesh sanctified and not the heart, you are what we call religious. So you look holy, but the heart is corrupt. Isn't that something? <laughs> I'm walking around here, Alicia, all covered up, big church hat from here to here. Can't even, you can't even see my toes because I'm so holy. And my heart is just sick and nasty. That's what, re that's religion. Sanctification, what sanctification does, sanctification says, this is, this is a heart issue. And watch this, when the heart is right, then all of a sudden, your heart is so pure that the Holy Spirit say, don't worry that, don't do this. And you say, yes, Lord, because you're my Lord. Whatever you tell me, I really don't care. Because it's all about you now, because you are the value. I value you so much. If you told me, don't go here, I won't go. I value you so, I value your wisdom. So if you tell me don't marry this person, I'm not going to marry them, even though I like them. Because I value your decision. This may be too much for you, but we ain't sanctified. So we go tell him what we won't go do. OK, I know you say I shouldn't marry this person, but I like him. So you just have to bless what I like. And all hell break loose. And then why? Why can you help me? And he's sitting up there saying you value your brain, your mind, your idols more than what I had for you. This is really how it works, guys. So in the sanctification process, you go see a lot of fighting going on on the inside of you. And it's because we are he's shifting item number one on your value list. He's shifting that down to item three. 
And he is probably at number five, not to none of y'all, because I know he's number one in y'all life, right? Help us, Lord. <laughs> I sense an early altar call. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that he's on all of our list. That's clear because you wouldn't be here because you spent time. So you're here saying that you are after the things of God. So you don't have to tell me that he's that you're not pursuing God because you would not have spent time. The question is, where is he in the list of your value system? That's the part we got to work on because he's in all of our lists. I'm clear about that. I know he's on your list. You can even see it. He's on the list. The question is, is there anything, number one, that need to go down to number two? That's what we got to work on in this series. And all of us, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will put more time and money into something that we would say, oh, God, I don't know, God, you're first. But the time and money will tell. This thing is a little more important because if this thing comes up and then I got to either pray or get this thing. We'll move to this. God, you know, my heart. I'll talk to you later. Because I need to get my idol. I need to take care of my number one. So I know he did something in my heart in the last few years because it looks something like this. In the last few years of my life, um, definitely I'm, I'm going to say um, something changed. Um, I was telling my wife um, in 2019, um, you know, I, I, I went on a three day consecration. Um, and I had an encounter with the Lord I've never had in my life. I would the, October 2019 will never be the same. That was my that was the moment that I knew s something happened in my heart because I had a true encounter. I've always had encounters with the Lord throughout my journey, but nothing like what I experienced in my house. And I'm going to tell you right now, after those three days was done, it was so impactful. And I and, and you all, are, if you haven't experienced this, you will experience this. If you truly, if he's becoming the true value and you're seeking first his kingdom and, and his righteousness, this is going to happen to you. I'm just, I'm just prepare yourself. I've went on fast a lot. I fasted a lot. This three day fast was the only, was the first three day fast because of the impact of his appearance in my life. Those three days that when the fast ended, I got sad because I had to eat. I actually got depressed when I had to go back to eat. Not just for the food. It's just that I didn't want to finish this fast because of what I was experiencing. I was in such a place with him that I got depressed coming back to this stuff that we touch and taste. And I got depressed. It was I was getting sad that I had to go back and try to put food in my system because I was such in a place where when I got the value, I said, I don't even want food now. But listen to the guy who said this. The guy back then used to be addicted to food. So how can a guy who used to be addicted to food now say, I don't want food? What can do that? Something, a new value increased over the food. <laughs> and when I got a touch of that, now I get the scripture where he says, he who, he who drinks of the water that I give will never thirst again. It is a place, y'all, that we can get to if we put him first, if we truly seek him first. If you are still feeling like, OK, I know I got God, but I'm still seeking everything else. That means his, he's in there, but he's may not be number one. But when he is number one, I'm telling you, everything else will take a back seat. So after 2019, before 2019, I always prayed. I always made time for God. But watch this. After 2019, I don't talk to nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't look at my phones. I don't do nothing until I speak to him first. Somebody tell me, why did that happen after 2019? I was always praying, 
But why now prayer is first? Value. Because guess what? I still have busy days. So nothing changed. It's just, I'm still going to do this at nine, but eh, new value. I am not going right to nine o'clock without talking to my number one. Because in number one, everything else falls in place. But if I put number one at number eight, I'm struggling. And then by the time I get to number to what should be at number one, I'm too tired to pray. Because everything else wore me out that don't have value. I hope this is blessing y'all, man. And then we wonder why I can't get, because God is last. We keep going to him at the end of the day when our eyes are bloodshot red. And that's when, hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you. And he's like, okay, that's all I get out of you. So when you are the sharpest when you wake up, why do we give that to social media? We go on, we pick, wake up and go just like this. And we're giving this the time currency. And then when, and then we, I don't have time for Jesus. Oh man, I, I, it's because we have not put him first. So that's why he says, when you seek me first, all this other stuff. And that's what happened to Paul in Philippians. Paul got to the place. Paul says, wait a minute. When I got this encounter, when I had this encounter, that's why having an encounter with Jesus is everything. Because until Paul had the encounter, he was still knowledgeable. He was religious, <laughs> thinking he was doing God's service by killing Christians. But the encounter shifted his value. So here I was saved since 1992, been in the ministry for years, served, did all kind of stuff, traveled the world. I did so much stuff and none of that mattered. It was almost like I don't I felt like I was starting fresh after 2019 because I had a true encounter. And when I had the true encounter, I'm like, why did I? I don't even have a desire to wake up and go like this no more. Let me check the weather. I used to wake up and watch CBS News. All, all it, That was like a normal. It was so normal for me to wake up and just hit the TV and hear the news. And then I would like maybe pray in the shower and stuff. You, you know how we always put God in the shower. <laughs> we always put God in the shower. He does. It's like it, we give we either put God, God in the shower or while we brushing our teeth. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> And then when we're in our car, watch this, when we're in our car, then we put worship music going in our car and we feel like, okay, whew, this is my way of connecting God. And God is like, that's good. You, you're listening to worship music, but you're not listening to me. And me is the word. Because <laughs> true disciples listen to his word. My sheep knows my voice. You can't always hear his voice listen to music. I tell everybody that all the time. Worship music is for you. It brings you to a place so you can connect with the person you're in love with. So look at worship music like this. So if you're married, look at worship music as a place to be that where you're now intimate with the person you love. But watch this. What good is it that you're now intimate with the person you love, but you don't want the person you love to talk? You keep doing that for 10 days. The person who you are intimate with will be like, listen, I need to say something. Turn all that uh, that 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 BB King off. Well, I don't know why would you listen to BB King, but turn, <laughs> turn off that music so I can speak to you. That's when the intimacy really kicks in when you hear His voice, and that shifted me too because I used to only connect to God through listening to music. I used to play all my worship music all day long, and I'm like, ooh, I'm connected to the spirit. And yes, it kept me, it kept me focused. It kept me like the scripture says, whatsoever things is good, lovely, just. So I was definitely connecting, but I wasn't listening. So when he was telling me things about my purpose, I couldn't hear it because I'm so busy listening to Todd Delaney. I hear what Todd Delaney's voice, but I can't hear Jesus' voice. I hope y'all is getting this. So I don't want us to be a culture. I want us to be a culture to put everything in its right place. Listen, get your praise and worship list. Get your worship list. Blast it. Jam to it. But you need a long time with Jesus. You can't live all. I'm just telling you. Trust me. I tried it for about 15 years and you go still get defeated by the devil because the devil don't respect worship music like you think he does. The devil will actually get on a keyboard and play worship music for you. He'd be like, oh, go ahead, lift your hands. Oh. 
The only thing the devil respect is the word. So he faced Jesus. Jesus didn't get up there and go, hey. hey. So, Hallelujah, Jesus. The devil was like, if you're the son of God, could turn these stones of bread. Oh. Oh. The devil the the devil was standing there saying, I ain't going nowhere. Keep, keep lifting your hands. I ain't going nowhere. Jesus says, it is written. Then the devil said, oh, man, I got I to gotta do something else. Then he, if, you're the son of, if you're the son of God, cast yourself down. Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't go, hallelujah. hallelujah. He ain't doing it. Jesus said, it is written. No emotion. He wasn't leaping and jumping. He went straight to what worked. He did it three times, and the scripture says, and the devil left him. So we have been lied to thinking that that is how we're going to connect. Use it, but that is not the thing. He says, my disciples. Let me give you one scripture, and we're going to go because I know I'm over time. I just got to show you this because you're a Jesus disciple. Go to John 15, and then, and then we're going to go to fuel worship. But just let me show you this because I need everybody to know that you got to value Jesus, not the, not the thing to get you to Jesus. <laughs> Praise gets you to him. Worship is an intimacy, but you need to hear his voice. You need to sit down and let him tell you some things. And you're only going to do that with time. Uh oh, think of, the, think of that thing we spend. John 15, look at verse 17. I'm sorry, look at verse 7. John 15, verse 7. This is in my new book that's coming out, so it's, it's going to, I really break it down in a new book. It says, If ye abide in me, in my what? My worship music? I'm going to read it again. If ye abide in me and my praise music abide in you. <laughs> Let me see it again. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask. So the people who ask and don't know the word. I hope y'all getting it. That's why we ain't seeing no prayers answered. <laughs> so he says, you ask and he says, and it shall be done because you know my word. Now look at verse, look at verse uh, eight. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So ye, shall ye be my disciples. Now look at this. He says, as the father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now verse 10, he says, if ye keep my commandments, he didn't say if you keep a playlist, ye shall abide in my love. Who want to abide in the love of God? Then you're going to have to connect to the word. Out of the word is going to come the worship. Out of the word is going to come the praise. Out of the word is going to come the thanksgiving. Out of the word is going to come everything you, all, all the other stuff. But you got to value, if you, if you cannot value Jesus and dismiss yourself from his word. So to value Jesus is to spend time in his word. Does everybody understand that? So the reason why I tell you that, <laughs> man, I, maybe I've been too exposed I've been too exposed and maybe that has helped me to be so passionate about it because I've been too exposed and I, I, I know what it's like to have a form of godliness, but deny the power. I know what that's like. I had the form. I knew how to lift my hands. I knew how to have church. Have you ever heard, you know, I, I, I used to have church all the time. Oh, I can't wait to go have church. I love having church. The only problem is when I left church, I didn't know how to be the church. And you know why I know how to be the church? Because I don't have the thing the church need to survive, the word. That's why the devil don't care that y'all shouting, we shout shouting praise all day. Just don't get the word. He happy. Just come and dance and leap and jump. Demons do that. I've seen it. They have demons are beat you dancing so fast. Demons are run. Demons are speaking tongues. Demons are leap, kick, scream, and kick over drum sets and be like, hallelujah. <laughs> Fall and roll it and then get up. And then when it's time for the word, all of a sudden they got to go to the bathroom. I, I could, man, I could tell y'all some stuff. So Jesus disciples is attracted to his word. That's why I tell you, you go through this, you go through the New Testament and you tell me one place where Jesus brought all his disciples together and said, OK, let's build a, a beautiful worship choir. Um, John, I need you to go on the keyboard. James, I need you on the drums. And uh, Bartholomew, I need you to do uh, the soprano note. <laughs> Jesus was just taking up. He, he was so concerned about getting his word in them that he would, they would just be on the seaside talking. 
He'll take him to a mountain. He just tried to get the word because he says, if you get this word, that's the only way fruit can be born. I pray that you guys were touched by this. God is sanctifying you. Let's put him first, guys. We want him number one this week. If Listen, tomorrow our Buffalo Bills play again. Thank God they won last week. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but truth be told, I can't wait to the game tomorrow. I can't. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. But I promise y'all, I promise you, I am not going to wake up and be watching all the news reporters talk about the game. I'm waking up and I'm talking to Jesus first. Because I value him more than that one o'clock game, even though I'm going to watch the one o'clock game. But guess what? I got to connect with who I value number one. So all Jesus disciples who's going to put him number one, let's just give God a praise real quick. We giving him a praise because he will be one. No more two. He's too valuable to be two. I don't want him to be two. I don't want him. I don't. I'm just thinking about what is that important that I would put him as number two when all my resources, everything I am is he is connected to him. He's the vine. I'm the branch. What am I going to do without the vine? The branch can't do nothing without the vine. It needs the vine. So why would the branch not connect to its source? It's connected to all these other sources. I'm telling y'all everything in my book, but you can read that when it comes out. So let's bow our heads real quick. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. God, we first want to say, we want to make sure, God, that we put you first in our life again. I ask you, God, that you will forgive us, God, if we have put anything before you. God, I know you're sanctified us. You're preparing us, God, to be everything you called us to be. You've called us out. You sanctify us to, for your work, for your specific assignment. Now, Lord God, now we need you to help us in the sanctification process. Father, sometimes, God, it's been a fight for some of us to transition. But, Father, we are choosing to put you first. We don't want you to be three, number two, number three. We want you to be number one. We give your name glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you who are watching, if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, yeah, let's give God a hand praise. For those of you who are watching and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I'm, I'm here to encourage you. Listen, please make the best decision. Put Jesus Christ in your life. You, you're going to need a savior. You cannot have eternal life without him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. And if this is you. If you really want to make that decision to accept Christ into your life the way we did, we listen, we're no, we're no different than you. The only thing we did was we got our ticket to eternity by accepting him. So you can take your, have your ticket accepted today if you accept Christ. So if this is you, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that you died on the cross for my sins, that you are the way, that you are the truth, that you are the life. And I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my savior in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if that is you, the angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are rejoicing here at Fuel Station Church. We thank you so much for taking time again to connect with us. And until next week, I'm encouraging you to make sure you put Jesus Christ first and let all the other things you value be second, third, and fourth.